Okay. Yes, sir. Like you talked about Muslims. So like, why, like, why not each of them? A Muslim came up to me and was asking me questions. I mean, you came in like later on, right? Is this about Islam or Christianity? Well, if someone, if anybody asks me a question, if Muslim asks me questions, I'm going to answer, right? Yeah. So I was answering according to the Quran, according to about Jesus, because we were clearing up a matter about Jesus, right? But you said like a prophet, Jesus is a prophet, and then the son and then a God. Can you clarify this? Sure, yeah. So Jesus is the Caliph of Allah, okay? He's the representative. What, what is Caliph? Do you know Arabic? A, a representative. He's the one who stands in the gap for Allah. So it's just like if we put it, you know how in the Quran it explains God in ways that we can understand? We understand we understand family, right? We understand father is the highest authority and son is the second in charge. In Arabic families and Hebrew families, right? Someone represents the father. So Jesus Christ is called the son because he represents the father. Okay. In the Bible, it says that in the Bible. Yeah, sure, sure. I can, I can mention uh, like John chapter one. There's John chapter ten. There's so many places. Which Bible is this? Any Bible says the same. Do you really want me to pull it up? Because I, I can. I, I mean, like, this is a question. I mean, like, I would like to ask you, how many versions of the Bible do you have in Christianity? How many versions of the Bible? Many, many translations of the Bible. Many. Just like I can, like this. This translation is Abdullah Yusuf Ali. And, I, and there's many different translations of the Quran as well. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, is that, yes, there are many English translations of the, of the Bible. I'm not hiding that. But every translation of the Bible... Uh, no, that's okay. You're not the Messiah. You're Pierre the and Messiah. There can be no belief for that reason. Okay. So, so anyway... Um, yeah, so it doesn't matter. Every translation... Translation from what language? You know that there are more than 300 versions of the Bible. And they are different, like not, not like different translation, they are different. Even like Jesus, peace be upon him, there's like a family tree in one Bible. There is a family tree for him in one Bible, and another Bible you will find another family tree, right? No, it's, it's, it's tracing through the different lineages through Mary and Joseph, and it's read that, that way through Matthew and, and Luke. So, so here's what I'm saying. Re regardless of which English translation, and the Quran has the same thing, so no, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain. Let me finish it. Let me explain, and then you can go. No, no, no. Let me explain, and then and then you can go after. Okay. Right, let me. Can I explain, and then you can go after. When you try to explain something in a in a in a language, um, you have to break it down in the best vernacular, that grammar that you can use. So if you're trying to reach a younger generation, you want to use words that you can understand. If you want to reach a higher academic, then you want to be more literal and so forth. But here's the thing. Um, God is not an Arabic man, okay? So whatever, if he's uncreated and his word is uncreated in the heavens, the moment that you bring it into this world, into an English language, you're not going to fully comprehend God, what God was trying to say from the start because God is in the uncreated realm. So anything you have, whether Quran or Bible, it will never be the same as the uncreated because he's higher. So even if God tries to explain himself in Arabic, it's still not explaining himself. You understand? Do you, know, do you understand? Do you know? Do you, do you understand what I just said? I understand, but like I'm like you didn't under, uh, answer my question. Like, do you know what language the Bible was revealed in? Absolutely, in, in Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek, three languages over time. The Bible, yes, yes. Okay, so like it's not the translation. Like you know, there are different churches. There is the Catholic. There are the Orthodox. There are the New Angelican, you name it. There's many churches. Yeah. Just like there's many, according to Hadith, there's going to be 73 different... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So in Quran, okay, I challenge you, okay, I challenge you to give me, like, now we are in Toronto, Canada, okay, and you can go to Indonesia, and you can go to South, like, anywhere in, the, in this planet. The Quran is the same. No, it's not. There's different kirats, and one is the al hafs and one is the Warsh. And and if you go to... This is... What's your name, brother? Hold on, hold on. Come, come. come. Why is it around the whole... <laughs> so, so when you... Dawood. Dawood? Yes. In order, like, in order, like, either this is a conversation, okay, by logic, okay, I give you my idea, and you give me your idea, or, like, 
you want just to like a breach and you have no, the whole no, no. right to no, no, I'm just saying you said something that's incorrect. If I went to some parts of the world, the Quran would be following a different kirat than the one in 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 in, in United States. Am I right? No. You said something that wasn't I'm not correct, right. Right. So oh, there, there so there's not different readings of the Quran. Are, are you, just be honest with me. Of course, I am honest, Lord. Now, what is the difference between, is there a difference between reading, like, for example, like there is Canadian accent or American accent, or like there is a difference between the whole structure? No. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. It's, it's that the vowels under the Arabic writing is different in the different readings, and it makes... Right, exactly. So you're agreeing with me. And the different readings, because of the different vowel markers in the hold on, in the different Arabic, give different meanings. In some cases, not okay. I will pull it up for you, and and let's just be honest, man. I am, I am telling you that there are like more than hundred, more than three hundred versions of the Bible with different, totally different issues, even of like the family tree of the Son of God, which is something that I don't understand. KJ version is closest version to the original manuscript of the how original many, author. How many Bibles are there? Uh, that's not the real Bible. Those are counterfeits. Don't worry about him. It, 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 like, you're talking to me. Uh, so, so I'm just going to um, uh, just pull up some uh, differences between... Uh, so, in the half... Just with words, right? In the half version, uh, we have Malik... And Malik, okay, it, it, it actually makes it different from owner and king. We have in one word a bird, and the other because of the vowels, it means flying. In one means of support, the other valuable. The one peace, then the greeting, good tidings, proclamation. Indeed, a musician, indeed, magic keeper, preservation. Two kinds of magic, two magicians, big, many. So, this is all the, so these are you know, these are verses with different meanings, and this is the Quran. Like a king, a king, or like an owner, okay, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, God, okay, Malik al mulk like in Arabic. Okay, that's one, that's easy. What about bird and flying? The bird is flying, my friend. Okay, so if one version says the bird, and the other one says the flying, I mean, that's a different word. Like, no, let's, let's just be honest. No, it's implied. It's for me, like, I'm from Jordan, okay? It's for me, it's a bird. Actually, it's that's fine, it's Europa, implied. It's flying. This is like a main or like readings. I'm talking about in the Bible. Which Bible do you use? I use a King James Version, but I, I can read any of them, right? That's true. When, That's was, when it was written. Translated in the 1600s. But we still have ancient Greek manuscripts. And we even found one in 1948. It's called the Dead Sea Scrolls, dated back 150 years before Christ. And it has pretty much the entire Old Testament yeah. and it lines up yeah. with what the Old Testament we have today after 2,000 years. So what this tells me is even if there's there's little, yeah, oh, hold on a second, even if there's s small scribal errors or there's enough manuscripts to do, yes, the point uh, let, me, let me finish. Yeah. There's, there's enough manuscripts to do what we call textual criticism. And if when you get more scholarly in Islam and in the Quran, they have the same problem. Like, for instance, in 1972, there was a manuscript found in a place called Sana. It's called the Sana manuscript, and it differs in the Arabic from the manuscripts that you have. Just, just look at it. Just type it up, Sana. Wait. So, what I'm trying to say is, if you actually get into the scholarship, Muslim scholars are starting to admit that there are textual variants in the various different manuscripts. There are some differences. And this is just the honest truth. You can go to the highest sources of Islam. And it's the same thing. Anytime you have people copying manuscripts, you're going to get little textual variants. You're going to get different things. And we do have that. I'm not lying to you. But there's so many manuscripts that we can even put together and part. Like, what, what was it actually? And it's so minor that it doesn't make any major difference. The, all of the Bibles, all of the Bibles say Jesus died on the cross. He resurrected. All of the Bibles say he was born of a virgin. All of the Bibles list the same miracles that Jesus did. Maybe just like, you know, you have different readings here. Like, I, I don't know how you could not be honest here and say a bird and flying. Okay, I'll give it back to you. A bird and flying is two different words, okay? Okay, so I can, like, discuss with this with you about Quran, okay, for, like, the next week, okay? We can do that. But as you are saying that, 
the Bible is the truth. Like, as a Muslim, I believe in Bible. I have to believe in Bible. And I believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. Okay? In his creation, he was unique. Okay? He's a prophet. And you just said it. You said he's a prophet. And he is one among the, like, because prophet has ranks, he was among, like, the top of the prophets. I am telling you, like, you said King James. Do you know what King James did to the Bible? No, tell me. He made changes, right? No. Why it's called King James? Because he was the overseeing uh, editor of the version. Okay, okay. Editing of the word God. In but he wasn't the translator. So who was the translator? He was the one overseeing the translation. He was the king. He authorized he made updates. the translators. No, he didn't. He authorized the people to make a translation in the English vernacular. That's why it's called the King James Version. He made, he made, just, just, just study it. I, mean, I, I made it. I studied it. So you, you think different? Of course, man. You need to think. You need like, to read. Like, King James made changes okay, for his church. He changed the Bible. Like, like other, so many people did. There are 360 versions of the Bible. Now, you're saying Jesus... This is like... A, so, my question to you. It doesn't matter. You, I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't matter what you believe about the King James Version because we have many trans, we have many manuscripts prior to that anyway. What you really need to worry about, you know what, what you really need to worry about as a Muslim is the discrepancies in the Quran concerning our Bible. Because in the Quran, Surah chapter 3, Surah chapter 5, Surah chapter 10, it, and I'll read it to you. It says in Surah chapter 10, verses 94, O Muhammad, if you're in doubt concerning anything revealed therein, ask the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians. It says in Surah chapter 5, I believe, 43, it says that the Christians and Jews have nothing to stand upon unless they base it upon the gospel and the, and the, and the Torah that was revealed. And you agree with that. So you're telling me that God is telling the Jews and the Christians at the time of Muhammad, 600 AD, to trust in the Bible. But then at the same time, you're saying, don't trust in the Bible. That's that's a problem that you have in your Quran. And all I'm saying to you today, I'll tell you, why. I'll tell you, you can tell me why. Go ahead. So now we believe that the Torah is a holy book. The Bible is a holy book. Okay. Also the word that was sent to David, the King David in the Hebrew and the Prophet David in Islam. David, okay. What we believe in that the word of God at the time of Jesus, we are after him. At the time of Moses, it has been changed. Okay, it is there. The Bible is there, but it some parts are being deleted, some parts are being added, some parts are being like sort of manipulated. Okay, but there is some truth. For that, for that, Quran came as like all inclusive, and you you just see it. You just see King James made uh, like all. Oh, well, well, just, well, just, just, just look at any historical work here. This is. Like, it says right here, it's, it's, the King James Version or Authorized Dawood, Version of the Bible. Dawood, Dawood, can I ask, like, okay, did, let's go back. Just clear up this thing, one thing, so we don't have to go back. Okay. No, just one second. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Because like, if we want to use like the. Like we keep coming. Here, come, come, come. We keep going back and back and back. It's a saga. I have to go. Okay, just, let's finish. Yeah. Okay. If, if we want to use like the phones and resources, we will like can steal hours from here. But like, I am asking like logical questions and. I hope you answer me. Okay. If if you cannot answer, it's fine. Sure. Now, with, like when you went by preaching, you said that uh, the prophet Jesus, the prophet, and then the Son of God, okay, and then he died for you. So my question is, if like why God, like cannot just forgive your sins? Why he had to send his son to die for you? Because the forgiveness of God is revealed in creation, and he did it through a means, which is Jesus who showed justice and mercy in his death, burial, and resurrection. That's why he did it like that. If he didn't do it like that, he would still have to do it through any another revelatory means because God is not creation. Forgiveness is creation. Forgiveness is creation, so it has to be done in creation. Justice is creation, so it has to be done in creation. So if God is going to show justice and mercy at the same time, the best way he did it was through taking ownership of our sins through Jesus Christ. The revelatory word of God. He showed that God is merciful and just all through one action, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's why he did it through Jesus. Why? Why? Like, 
my uh, my question is can God. God is the like the Almighty. The capability of doing everything. Can I answer him? Yeah, but but before but before hold on, I'll get you to. But before you say anything, just want to clear up this King James version. The King James or authorized version of the Bible remains the most widely published text of the English language. It was the work of around 50 scholars who were appointed in 1604 by King James, and it is dedicated to him. Until the mid-1500s, attempts to give lay people access to an English Bible had resulted in punishment. Finally, in 1611, came an officially approved version that also had enduring appeal to King James or the authorized version. That's why we call it the authorized King James version. It's not because King James was sitting around and adding things. It was that 50 scholars were appointed by him to make an English language Bible. So now you learn that's the reason why. So all this here say, oh, King James, this and this, that's not the truth. This is the fact. Okay? That makes sense. Okay. So now you wanted to say something? Yeah. So, so to answer your question, right? Back in the Old Testament, they used to sacrifice bulls and stuff, right? But they never felt fulfilled by, they, they never felt fulfilled. This is what the, this is what the Bible tells you. They never felt fulfilled from the sacrifice of the, the animals that they were using. Now, um, when they became aware of who, okay, he says Christ, um, Jesus Christ, but Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit died and came back with the Spirit upon him that he bared record of, they looked at that now resurrection as a sign of hope. Something that they didn't get from the sacrifice in the Old Testament with the with the animals, you understand? So what will happen? What will happen to the people? What will happen to the people who died before Jesus? Okay, I I I I, I, I can't. Okay. Can I answer that? Can I answer that? Oh, sure. Go ahead. I'll, I'll just answer that. Jesus was always there. Christ Jesus is the Holy Spirit, as Jesus Christ was always there. In the beginning, it says, "In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth." That heaven and earth is the God of heaven and the God of earth mentioned in the in the book of Revelation. Okay, so what will, happen, what will happen to the people? I'm this. What will happen to the people who came before Jesus and who didn't believe in Jesus? So the mercy of God has been revealed from the beginning and through different means that that showed Jesus Christ. So, 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 so right, right. So, no, 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 everything. No, let me finish. Everything was pointing to Jesus. So all of those people that they, in the Old Testament, they did sacrifices, that was a picture or image of Jesus. Right from the beginning, what we have in our Bible is God killed a animal and made clothes for Adam and Eve when they sinned. And that was a sacrifice for their sin. All from the beginning. The reason why we have sacrifices, even in the Arabic culture where you have sacrifices, it doesn't explain why. But, I, can't explain I know, but in, the, but in the Bible it explains why. Because the Bible says there is no forgiveness or remission of sins except without an atoning sacrifice something that dies on your behalf and how do i know that this concept is true is that in order for you to live just as a normal human being something has to die when you live you eat food that food has to die you have to kill the animal you have to kill the vegetables you take the energy and you live this same principle god left there so that you would receive jesus so that you would understand that in order for you to live spiritually, something needs to die on your behalf. This is what God did so that you would never doubt His way. This is God's way. It's not about us. When God says something, we have to obey. And this is what God put in nature. He revealed His truth, His gospel in nature. Even in your own body. Every time, every time you get a cut, there's a redemptive aspect and there's a judgment. It removes the waste and it heals all at the same time. Jesus healed and bring judgment at the same time everything points to jesus so anybody that believed in the previous revelations of the prophet were actually believing in jesus before he came and everybody that believes in jesus after he died is believing in what he did on the cross so that's your answer so are you telling me that like in order for god to forgive people he created okay he has or he had to send his son and make him die in order like to forgive us is that true absolutely are you going to agree with me okay forgiveness is creation forgiveness is in creation am i not you god god in, in uncreated there is no forgiveness it, forgiveness is revealed but in my point of view god like you have no barrier between you and god god is the great the almighty the creator of the universe he doesn't have to sing a son in order to forgive no there is a barrier between you and god who said there's not a your sin is your barrier okay your sin separates you from god am i not am i right you are right but how to 
like a bit closer to God by asking forgiveness from God directly. So, okay, so put it this way. Your sin is a tangible thing in creation that separates you from God. Am I right? Your sin doesn't separate you from God. Doesn't, like, because when you make a mistake, you are a human. So what sends people to hell then? It's your sin. Oh, man, when you make a sin, what will you do? You need, you, there's, another, there's another tangible thing you need. One tangible thing separates you from God, it's your sin. And another tangible thing brings you to God, it's His mercy. His mercy, sin is a manifestation of something you do. Mercy is a manifestation of something God is doing. And the manifestation of God's mercy is Jesus. Okay, then you're saying that Jesus, peace be upon him, Isa alayhi salam, was sent as the son of God to forgive. He was, the Quran says it, it says he was sent as a mercy of Allah. So he's the mercy of Allah. So like our sins can be forgiven, right? Through Jesus, yes. Okay. So what about like the people who are committing crimes, killing, stealing? Will they just be forgiven because they believe in Jesus? If they receive the mercy of Allah. Same way anybody could be. How, how can anyone go to heaven? Anybody, Muslim, Christian, Jew, without the mercy of Allah. Good. So the mercy of Allah can only be received by those who are humble enough to say, I, I need forgiveness and I accept the death. What God did through Jesus is a miracle. Jesus is a miracle and what he did on the cross for you is a miracle. Forgiveness is a miracle. I'm going to tell you, forgiveness is a miracle. And it was done through Jesus. And what he did, he paid for your sin and gives you the power of the Holy Spirit to live a different life. He, this is why Jesus said you must be born again. You could only be born again through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. You need to be born again. That's the only way. You need to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, and you need to have the Spirit of God inside of you in order to be a child of God. This is how we come back to God. So if you receive the mercy of God, His mercy can come into you, and His mercy will be from everlasting, everlasting. He will change you from the inside and out. That's why you see, us Christians are not sitting around here just doing bad things. I'm sitting around here telling people about the good news. Why? Because God made me come alive again. What is it, what is it that He gave me that makes me serve God? What is it? I mean, is it is? Am I just sitting around here smoking and swearing and, and, and killing? Is, is that what I'm doing? Why did I change? I'm going to tell you why I changed. Because the Holy Spirit came into my life and I received the mercy of God. That's what changed me. He took away my sins and He changed me. And I'm offering the same thing to you. He can change you too. That's all I'm saying to you. What I'm saying to Brother Dawood that it's like this. Like in faith, okay, forgiveness whatever you name it, okay? I understand the way you're trying like, to explain. Like, you need to explain your faith, right? And it's like, to be honest, it's very difficult to understand the Christian approach about Jesus, peace be upon But what I am saying is that what you need to do is that like, we need to put everything aside, okay? And we need to believe that there is only one God. Absolutely. The help, like, who created the universe, okay? This is the starting point. And then everything else will follow. Jesus, as a Muslim, I believe that he was a prophet. He was unique in his creation. Okay, and he was sent in certain times for the sons of Israel. Okay, with the Bible. Okay, so there is a continuation of the prophets. Now, saying that Jesus is the Son of God, this is your belief, okay, but you have to explain it. Yeah. So many things, so many details, okay, which like... It's start. actually very, very simple. It's not simple. I'll, I'll tell you why. I'm going to tell you something. It's so... No, it's so simple, it's it's easy. Look, you see yourself, right? There's an unseen part about you. God made it like this so you can understand. God is unseen. No man has ever seen God. Okay? You see His signs everywhere. You see His signs. Look, so when you say God is one, the word number one is a creation. No. One, the one word one, no, 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 but what is one in uncreated? Until it's beyond, no, 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 this is what I'm saying. When you say God is one, the word one is a created. It's his creation we're talking about. What is God to you then? God is eternal, eternal. He's unseen. He's unknown. He's bigger than anybody can imagine. So when you say one, he's even bigger than one. That's why even in the Quran, he says we. Allah. He, he's, he's big. He's bigger than one. So when you say one, what, which one? One, one like you, or is he bigger than you? He's everywhere. No, no, no so what I'm, what I'm saying is this. Is that every time God tries to reveal, explain himself, guess how he does it? Through human means. Prophets. No, he does it. He says he is one. He says he has a throne. He says he has hands. He says he has eyes. 
Everything that he explains himself, even the way he speaks, is human language. Is your hand no. like the so door? what I'm trying to say, if Maybe you put... Please. Is your hand here like the hand of the, like the door of that car? No. But they are the same meaning, the same name, sorry. Like hand, hand. Okay, when we say God is one, it's not like you're one. I understand, but the, but the reason why we, we have a brain... Okay, sir, is instead of instead of interrupting, let me just talk. In, in order for us, because why we keep walking back and back and back, the reason why we, we have language is so that we have meaning. When we say God is merciful, what does that mean? When we say forgiving, what does that mean? When we say love, what does that mean? We, we understand because we're made in His image. He, we have similarities like Him even though He's the most merciful. But we understand mercy. We can be merciful. He's light, but we can have light. He's love, we can have love. Everything, all His attributes, He creates, but we can make things too. We are made in the image of God. So no, so we are made in, and he made it like that. So what I'm what I'm trying to say is that all of the qualities of God, it needs to be revealed. It can be understood. And it was best understood through Jesus. That's why we call him the Son of God. Because you're talking about one focal point, which is God, but then there has to be one person that harnessed the the, the attributes of God so that we can understand God because you will never see God but when you you know when you sit when you stand before God the, the, the Quran says when you stand before God you'll see him how are you gonna see God if he's in he's not even created anything you see is not gonna be God because God is not creation so what are you gonna see you're gonna see the image of God and you know who the image of God is Jesus what is the proof you know what the proof is? Is that when you look at all of creation, all of mankind, anything that ever revealed God, the highest revelation of God was Jesus. There is nobody else that never sinned, that conquered the grave, showed the authority of God, the power of God, the healing of God, the salvation of God, the resurrection of God, the destruction of sin against the Dajjal. Nobody did that better than Jesus. So if you're talking about who revealed it, who, who harnessed the glory of God the best, who harnessed the wisdom of God, who harnessed the mercy of God, who revealed the grace of God the best, it was Jesus. That's why we call him the Son of God. But I am asking you... That's why he's called the Messiah. He's the only Messiah. That's why he was born of a virgin. That's why he's with God today. That's why he's called the Word of Allah. That's why he's called the Messiah. That's why. This is, this, is, this, is, this is the truth. That's why he's the only one that came with the good news. He's the only one that could give the good news. Salvation. His name means salvation. This is why. Do um, like, you understand? You are telling me like nice words no, i'm telling you what's in the bible i'm telling you what's in the quran i'm telling you what's in the injil like even like in some churches like they bring a band to, to to sing right it's not about that it's not about like giving a speech okay about like jesus it's about convincing me that jesus is the son of god and i am asking you very logical questions that you didn't answer I thought I did. That's I thought everything I was just saying was explaining it. So maybe, maybe I can I can use all the nice words you said about me and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala about God. Is there anything wrong in that? No, but that's how God explains Himself. God explains Himself through words, right? So I'm I'm trying to explain through words something. When 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 God says He's the 99 names, these are words. You are celebrating, and we are having a discussion. No, no, no. Uh, well, one thing, I always celebrate the revelation of God. That's wonderful. I always glorify and praise on, uh, God, right? But but when God tries to reveal himself in some way so we can understand him, he uses logic. He gives not, He gives 99 names. He says he's the most merciful. How are we going to know he's the most merciful? Can we, to, like, can we go back like if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God chose like this through Jesus, this way Allah. What about Moses? What about Abraham? What about Noah? What about all the prophets? Yeah. Why, why, had, why, why Allah has to send all these prophets? It's the same reason, just logic, it's the same reason why you believe the Quran is the last revelation. Why don't we just say, oh, well, what's wrong with the Why is this the best revelation? But no, 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 but no, but that's what I'm saying. Use your logic. Let, let's let the logic be. No, 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 hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. All I'm saying is your logic is that God saves the best to last. Our logic is the same. God saves the best to last. The best is Jesus. That's it. So if you say God said, how can you deny? No, no, hold on a second. How can how can you say? We know the truth. 
We know the truth. <laughs> How does a man with the dick and balls get beat up? Okay, 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 I don't... Hey, hey, okay. You okay. Learn something? okay. Hey, yo, yo, yo Fowler. Like I, okay, ma'am, 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 ma'am. Ma'am, you're not really doing anything any justice right now. L listen. Muslim again. I'm trying to tell him. Okay. Oh, I thought she was one of us. <laughs> She's one of you, bro. <laughs> oh, man. I was like, you're not doing us any justice. He's not doing you any justice. <laughs> Listen, man. Look, look, look. All I'm, all I'm saying is this. One minute, like it's like I respect what you do. I like I'm from Georgia. You're a good guy. I, I I can see, man. What's your name, man? You got my name. You do, I can get. Admin. It's a nice name. Like I'm from Jordan. You know, Jordan is like Jesus. Peace be was baptized in Jordan. Okay, Christianity was started like Palestine, Jordan, like where I like belong. Uh, I live I live in Jordan in a Christian neighborhood. Okay, so. Like the point is that you are talking about Jesus. I totally respect that. It's your belief. You have the right to say whatever you want to do and to preach. But what stopped me that, like you said, Muslim, so I had to okay. have a conversation. This is not maybe the, the like the, the, the right like situation to discuss what is right and what is wrong. So we like need some like why don't why don't I give you my number? Sure. Take my number. Let's let's hang out or something. You seem like a cool guy, man. This is how this is how Christians and Muslims need yeah. to yeah. listen. We're 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 all trying to go to the Lord, and we have revelation and whatever. We have our understanding. And here, take my number, bro. Love you too. Yeah, of course you can give me a hug. I'll take a hug. Amen. God bless you too. All right. Yeah. Yeah. David. David. Like one last thing, David. Like let's like as in Quran says, like let us like Muslims, Christians, Jews, everyone, let us agree on one thing: that there is only one God. There is only one God. I agree with you, man. All right. And there's only one Messiah. His name is Jesus. I stop on that. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. All right, there's one God, there's one Messiah, amen. His name is Yeshua for a reason. You see, when you break down that word Yeshua, good to see you ladies. That word Yeshua is, you can bring back the speaker, Yahweh. It's a, it's a combination of Yahweh and the word for salvation. So Y-H-W-H, Yah, in Psalm 68, verses 4, it says, Call him by his name, his name is Yah. That's where the Rastafarians get the word Ja, Ja, Rastafari. They say that, they say the, the, the Rastafari, but... Jah is the short form for Yah, Yahweh. So when we say Yahshua, Yeshua, Yahusha, uh, Yehoshua, we're saying that Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is the only one that saves. 